Hi, my name is Nancy Malik, and I'm the Events and Marketing Coordinator for the Museum of Dufferin in beautiful Mulmer, Ontario. We'd like to welcome you here to the museum because we have so much to look through, whether it's a main exhibit, whether it's an art show, or whether it's a walk through our beautiful grounds tour. We welcome you. I'm sure a lot of you are wondering, what is the Museum of Dufferin? Here, located at Highway 89 and Airport Road, we are built into a bank barn. The style of the old barns that used to be built on the side of the hill. So when you walk in our main floor, it's actually the second floor. And our archives downstairs was called the Piggery. So we needed, that's where they kept the pigs. But this building was built specifically for being a museum in 1994 and we have been entertaining people from all over the world since then. The museum has grown over time with the most incredible curated exhibits, art shows, we have a beautiful little gift shop in the lobby, we have collected unbelievable amount of history, both artifact and archival here in the museum over the last century. <laughs> Since, since people first started coming to this area. So we have that history, the old photographs, the old tax books from, from the municipalities, and we have some of the most gorgeous artifacts you will find anywhere. One of the highlights of the museum, other than looking like a barn with a very large silo going up the side, is the fact that we also have the biggest collection of cornflower, Hughes cornflower. It was started in Amaranth, and it was considered at that time the middle-class crystal. Each piece in our collection was hand-carved by the most incredible artists, and it's wonderful to come and see how it was done, and the old equipment they used, and some of the unique colors and beauty of the design. Here at the museum, we want all ages to join us. We have kids' areas where they can do crafts and contribute to murals on the walls, as well as the outside garden, the interpretive garden, is absolutely beautiful and maintained by our Julie from our education department. We have a lot of kids' programs going on, and we want you to take a look at our website to see when and where, and you'll find all the information there. I feel very fortunate to work at the Museum of Dufferin. To be able to be working every day in the history of this region, before I even came up here, moved up here from Toronto, I researched this area and the museum was the first place I came to and I fell in love with it. The staff are amazing, everybody works so incredibly hard and it's a great place to spend an afternoon. For the year 2022-23, our curator Sarah has put together the most incredible main exhibit, which you can see in our display cases on the main floor. It's called Through the Looking Glass, and it's a look, kind of a comparison of what was and what is these days. We have a lot of things about COVID, the military, um, mental health, climate change, and things like toys, kids at play, and what they are playing with, what they used to play with, kind of a big difference. And you'll see throughout each of these displays, even communication, and the way we used to have old switchboards and incredible telephones. And it, it's, I still have one of these telephones, so that lets you know how old I am. <laughs> But come and look at this incredible comparison between then and now. About a month ago, we had the Multicultural Festival here at the museum. It was a wonderful day with food vendors, dancers, cricket games. We certainly kept people busy. But one of the main thing was an art show. It was a juried art show, and it was called Unity in Diversity. And in the Orange Lodge here, we have all that work.
One of the artists that entered the art contest is my friend Ricky Shade. He's from Orangeville and he works at Maggioli's, which is an incredible art supply store down on Broadway. I think it's important when you look at this exhibit to look at the color and look at the vibrancy. And this is unity in diversity. We have incredible selections from all over, not just the Dufferin area. Our contest was open to artists across Canada. And we have incredible selections of the most beautiful, colorful work. One of the great things about the museum is we put on a lot of art shows. We have quite a few every year, prominent artists, new artists, diverse artists, and a 2D call for entry is on right now for a fall art fair where the artists will come and sell their work right here in the museum environment. One of the new projects at the museum is collecting the community. Our community in Dufferin County has grown so quickly and so fast and there's so much diversity. We feel that their stories also need to be shown here. So we are asking, out in the community right now, we are asking people to contact us. Go to our website, and, and the curator's name is right there, and how to contact her, to bring in your family history. It's very important to us. Here at the Museum of Dufferin, we have the Museum Archives, run by Laura Camilleri. This is where the history is. A lot of people kind of miss this area on the general tour of the building, but this is where the documents and the tax records I was talking about, and the photographs, this is where the history lies. And Laura, constantly researching, constantly bringing in new material, and this is one of the most exciting rooms, I think, in the museum. If you wanted to get in touch with the Archives Department and Laura, I suggest you give a call to the museum first and have a chat with her because she is very, very busy. We are now on the third floor of the museum and this is the Cornflower Glass Gallery. W.J. Hughes hailed from Amaranth here in Dufferin County. He eventually, the company making glass got so popular it moved down to Toronto for larger production. But here at the Museum of Dufferin, we have the largest collection of this glassware. It started out, if you look, every kind of different shape and design of glass. But what is absolutely amazing is if you look closely at the glass, very fine cut lines. That was done by hand. Thousands of pieces were done by hand. And we have different color displays. Therefore, some colors were, were more, hmm, Some of the colors that they produced added to the value, not only the look, but to the value of the glass. And we have cornflower glass in every color and every design even gold rim. One of my favorite displays in the museum is this section here. So you can see it's beautiful yellow glass with a tinge of green, but when I press this button, it's green. And that is called Vaseline glass. That's uranium in that glass. You can still eat off them. Those pieces are not poisonous, but still I thought that is absolutely beautiful. This is where they actually cut the glass. They sat at these tables for days and days and days and days and produced thousands of pieces. This is the blade that they used to cut each individual line in the glass. 
as the company grew, Mr. Hughes became quite smart at his marketing, as his daughter and her hubby did. So they had produced beautiful store displays in 1952 that look quite modern. And with these kind of displays, sales rose. Big advertisements. It became the popular glassware for weddings, family dinners. And also, you may notice over here, I think everyone had one of these trays. And Corel or Corningware also had the cornflower design. And here is a picture of Jack, JW, sorry. Here is a picture of W.J. Hughes. And this is the team that helped him build these be this beautiful company. Here at the museum, we have a building in our building. It's the 1881 Dufferin House. And the thing about this building is this is real. This was torn down, recreated. These are the logs that were used. This is the style of house that was used at that time. In here we have a kitchen and set up the way it would have been in 1881. A parlor room, kind of a music parlor room. Upstairs are four bedrooms and set up the way it used to be the kids' room, the parents' room, teenagers' room. So we welcome people to come and take a look inside our 1881 Dufferin House. If you want to find out more about the Museum of Dufferin, we are on all the socials, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, Google Business, and our website, which is www.dufferinmuseum.com. Mm -hmm.